Um, we now welcome uh, our second in innovation presenter, Mark uh, Pawsley, General Manager of SST Software Australia. Mark has worked in the agriculture information sector for 15 years, following previous roles in various agribusinesses, markets and on farm. Mark heads up the Australian operations of SST Software based in Brisbane after spending a number of years in the SSST head office in uh, Stillwater, Oklahoma. SST works with agricultural retailers and agribusiness in Australia to support farmers and service providers with information management opportunities, including the strategic development of the AgX platform, a standardised collaboration platform for the agricultural data management. Please welcome Mark to the uh, lectern. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to talk to you today, and Dave's uh, given a, a good uh, segue into my talk about connective, uh, connectiveness here. So, but I'm going to talk a little bit more about connecting all the, the various applications and, and technologies that are coming our, coming rapidly coming our way, as you all know. So, um, SST has, is not a startup. We've been around for 20 years. We founded as a software company. Uh, in, by 2001, we'd worked out we were more of a data company that wrote software, so we'd kind of done a flip. And by 2016, we've evolved into being a platform company that's inviting other players, other industry uh, technologies to come and create an ecosystem of connected applications. And, and that's mostly what I'm going to speak to here today. So I'm just going to cover off the concept of data interoperability, a big word, but I can't find a better one uh, that just really says, hey, we need all these different systems to talk to each other. Um, a little bit about data value and administration and what we really need to focus on is services in the ag industry to get adoption. So when, when we talk about technology in agriculture, we normally talk about drones and satellites and, and robots and of course apps and, and rightly so, you know, they're the things we interface with day to day. But the conversation that's not happening is what's the supply chain for technology? We just assume because it's digital and it's an app that it'll just work itself out, make its way onto the farm and get adopted. Um, and so, you know, the, the key part, I think, of, uh, of developing a supply chain is this data interoperability. And so what we're dealing with here in, in the ag industry is data from really two sources. Human data entry, things that we type in, tap into an app, manually record in some manner, um, and of course we need to focus on apps and software for that, and things that are you know, human, human friendly. And the other one is sensors. Effectively, you know, most of the other things we're talking about are a tractor yield monitor, a log from a tractor, satellites, UAVs, robots, they're all sensors in their own way, and they're all capturing and collecting data. And by the way, most of it is spatial. So we're now talking about geo-referencing that data to a point on the earth. And that's why we have to go back to our human data entry and make sure it's spatial as well, so we have all potential to put it all in one place. So the goal here is to create farmer value from that data, and the way we're going about it is apps and software and models and so forth. So the adoption model, or the adoption triggers, I believe we need to look at is bringing together these triad of R&D technology and the services that are needed to, to achieve adoption on farm. At the moment, these aren't very often connected. We're doing our R&D without any real recognition of what technology is actually on farm and what services are available to implement it. So we're just doing R&D in many cases driven by science. Our, our technology uh, is not always being delivered via services, so often it's going straight to farmer. We've got a hell of a lot of stuff going straight to farmer. And we really need to bring that back around and develop some services capacity. And I'll, I'll speak to that briefly in a minute. So in touching on what could be a highly technical concept, I just wanted to boil it down to something of a simple analogy. And, and it's no cryptic analogy. The, the nut represents data and the spanner is our software. And so in the real world, we have imperial and metric spanners. We all know that. That's what we've got. It works. Let's step away from that and just Pretend that doesn't exist. And if a new piece of hardware you purchase has a proprietary nut format, you probably get given a set of spanners when you buy it, which is what happens in software. You buy a new tractor, you get a piece of software that comes with it. 
That'd be okay if it was only one, but if the next piece of hardware you buy also has a proprietary format, now you've got two sets of spanners you've got to deal with. Uh, in, a, in a hardware world, we'd push back pretty hard on that. We don't in the software world, but that's what's happening. It gets worse when some spanner startup comes up with a cool new spanner that you'd love to work with, but of course, because there isn't or wasn't a format available for them to use, and the other players wouldn't share their format, we've got another format to play with. So you look at that spanner and go, Jesus, there's features in that I'd love to work with, but I'm currently with company one. You ask them if they have a spanner that's like that, and they go, no, can you build me one? No. So what happens is you don't get to use that spanner. They don't get to sell you a spanner. They probably go out of business. We just killed innovation. You know, if they could hang around long enough to build a full set of spanners, you might move over to their platform but they probably can't get that done. They start with one cool feature. By the time they try to evolve into a business, they disappear. So if a nut was data, it's obviously far more complex. We've got file formats. We've got data structures, you know, what columns are inside that file. We've got file contents and descriptors. So it's clearly it's a, a more complex environment than what we're referring to. To wrap that up, you know, we do have imperial and metric in that environment. What do we have in the software, the digital world, we've got that. And that's a real world situation where all of those companies are all going digital, they've all got apps, all got data formats that we're trying to engage with, and copy, import, paste, translate, it, it's a nightmare that is, in, is stopping development in the industry. So what's the answer? Well, we'll skip that bit, we don't really need that. Is what we call AgX. So it's a, a platform that we accidentally developed in developing, becoming a data company. Five years ago, we realised we'd actually built an infrastructure that we could licence to the industry, and that's what we're now focused on doing. So what is it? It's the potential for an ecosystem of apps and, sh and software that share a common data set. So what does it mean? Just like in a spanner environment, you can go and buy any spanner and use it on that nut. That's what we want to achieve. Go buy an app, use the data you've already got collected, and get on with the job. So SST has developed four main products. They're all completely interoperable because of AgX. So we've got apps there to do spray recommendations and, and farm records. We've got software to import track data, um, things to analyze it and, and do big data analytics. We're now inviting the industry to come and play. And in Australia, at this point, Back Paddock, uh, Yield Profit, uh, Geopharma is a, a new startup in the risk industry and a whole bunch of others that are coming to play and so now you can use a Backpadic app, create a rec, open it up in SST and vice versa. You're not locked into one piece of software uh, from one vendor because what I can guarantee is no software company is ever going to be able to build everything you want. You will need to run best of breed systems to, to do all the crazy things we're going to need to do down the track. And you're not going to want to be doing that with what we see here, a trunk of data. And there's not a huge array of information we need to collect. But what we're currently doing is building a new database for every application we work with. And that's just plain crazy. So what we've developed is 140,000 descriptors so that we can collect information, uh, map things back to common names so you're allowed to call them what you like deal with all that spatial geography that's difficult. Um, and of course, the administration and security of data. You know, that's the number one thing here. And, and every user who collects data in the AgEx environment is the administrator of it. Their data can't get more than one node away from them. And so you always know where your data is. It's your data. You need to be able to control where it goes. And by all means, share it. That's what we need to do, but share it knowing where it goes. So that's what our world is quickly looking like. All of those companies are developing something digital. They're all developing an app, and they want us to use it. But if we're going to import our data over and over again, it's just not going to get us anywhere. So AgEx allows you to work with all those companies, manage one set of data, and, and focus on the job, not data management. So wrapping it all up, uh, there's two more things I just want to touch on. Is One is services. Um, there's a chasm here at the moment between technology and pharma. 
Bridging that primarily, we need to focus on service provision. Um, you know, that's great if a farmer can resource adopting things on their own, but there'll always be a day when they need some help. And if their service provider can step in and help out on a compatible platform, that's what will get it done. And of course, our R&D needs to be done with some recognition of these are the real world technologies we have to implement on farm, those concepts, and these are the service provision opportunities that can allow a farmer to do resource getting it done when they don't have that inherently in their own business. And the other thing I want to touch on is um, a lot of the new applications that are coming online out there, if you read right down into the fine print, they're saying, we have the right to harvest your data and go sell it, go do something with it. And to me, that's just you know, incredibly uh, short-sighted in what's the opportunity in this industry. If the industry knows field six has 85 hectares of wheat in it, we can all get on with our job. Crop input suppliers, insurance and risk, capital markets, the accumulation markets. It's not a massive amount of data we need to share for this industry to run better. And that needs to be done in a transactional manner so a farmer can transact their data just like they do the, the physical products. It's not about selling data, it's about exchanging value. And we need a, an, an infrastructure like AgEx uh, to allow that to happen. And that will allow us to get on with things like big data. Big data is just lots of small data. Um, maybe even moving towards some industry metrics around sustainability. Again, we're going to need some form of data construct if we're going to create repeatable and, and temporal data. So wrapping up, that's what we need to do, but we need to have a common data construct in the industry to allow us to get on with developing capacity uh, across the various uh, stakeholders in the industry. Thank you.